Hey everyone, welcome back to the Golf House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny, and today we are gonna make some freezer-friendly bean burritos. These are excellent to grab for dinner or lunch if you're in a hurry. Let me show you how I make them. Okay, I've got my Instant Pot here, and did I mention we're making our beans in the Instant Pot? And then we're just gonna roll them into a tortilla and get them in the freezer. It's gonna be awesome. So in this Instant Pot, I am going to put two pounds of beans. I sorted them, rinsed them. Um, I did a quick soak on these. You can soak yours overnight if you prefer. But there is my two pounds of beans. I have four garlic cloves, I'm gonna pop those in, and I have two small onions. Now I'm also gonna add garlic powder. I like, I like to add them both. So here's my one teaspoon of garlic powder. <laughs> Excuse the dog. I'm putting in two teaspoons of onion powder. one teaspoon of cumin, two teaspoons of chili powder, and then I need two teaspoons of Mexican oregano, and you need to make sure it's Mexican oregano, and I like to put it in my hand and break it up. You don't have to, but I like to. Oop, that's my timer on the bread. Next, kind of oregano. And then I'm putting in one bay leaf. Now, here's the thing. Um, you can put chicken, um, you can put water in here, or you can put chicken broth in here. But I am going to put water, and I'm going to put a little bit of um, powdered chicken bouillon. But if you don't want to put chicken bouillon, you can just put water in here. You don't have to put that extra flavor. If just at this point, don't add any extra salt yet. Beans don't cook well. They cook really uneven if you salt them. Okay, so that was four, that was eight cups of water that I put in. Maybe a little less, maybe about seven cups. I'm actually gonna use just a couple of the um, chicken bouillon cubes. And these are the big ones that have oil on Okay. So, because they're already um, soaked, they're not gonna absorb that much more water. So, you gotta be careful. Otherwise, if you put too much in here, you're gonna end up with more like a bean soup, and then all your flavors in your liquid. Put just a little bit more. I want it about half inch over the top. Okay, I'm gonna put on my lid. I'm gonna make sure my vent Make sure my vent is to the closed position. Okay, and then I am going to cook these. Usually you cook beans for about 30 minutes, but I want these to get super soft because I'm gonna mash them. So I'm gonna give them an extra five minutes. I will see you when these are done. All right, it has been 30, they cooked for 35 minutes and I let it start to come down about halfway and then I released and did manual release. Right, and these are looking good. There's not too much liquid. So at this point, I am going to move this back. I am going to turn this on saute. I'm gonna get this heated up. I am gonna add about a tablespoon of bacon grease. That's about the extent of my grease for the refries, or fat, I should say. 
This is when I'm going to salt the beans. So I've got some Himalayan pink salt. They're going to require a little bit of salt here. <laughs> but I'm going to cook these to um, cook some of this liquid out. And then we're going to mash them. I'm going to cook these like this for about 10 minutes. Okay, these have been going for about 10 minutes. I'm going to start mashing them. And I'm still going to cook them, but I'm going to start mashing them. And I like to have some beans still in there, so I'll do, I'll mash about half of them. Okay, I'm gonna continue to cook this for about 10 more minutes. Okay, after 10 minutes, I'm just gonna turn this off. Make sure you're stirring this consistently while you're cooking it, I forgot to say, or your beans will stick to the bottom. And be careful because the beans pop and then they burn your hand. Use a hot pad <clears throat> or a glove. Okay, I'm just gonna let this hang out until it cools down. When it cools down, I'm gonna stick it in the refrigerator and we're gonna make the burritos tomorrow. That way it's completely cooled down. Okay, I've got all the components ready for my bean burritos. I've got my beans. I refrigerated mine overnight. You don't have to do that. Um, sometimes when I'm really busy, I just like to make things easy on myself and I'll make the beans while I'm busy that day and then the next day I can roll my burritos while I'm doing something else. Um, I've got my tortilla shells, I've got some cheese, and I've got some onions. Now, I love onions in the burritos and so does my husband, but if you just cut them up and you put them in there raw, they, the freezing of them just kind of makes them weird, and um, I don't care for them as much, so I just cook them slightly. They're not super cooked. I think I cooked them for maybe three minutes, tops on low. Um, got my freezer bags labeled. So you can, and what I usually do is put down wax paper and... I fill them, roll them up in wax paper, and then put them in here. I am out of wax paper, and they probably won't last that long, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so I'm just going to put them in here as is. But if you're going to keep them for any length of time or you plan on taking them to work or school for lunch, make sure that you wrap them with wax paper as well. So I've got my cutting board. I'm going to put some pepper jack cheese in this one. Oops. I can get it get them apart I usually like the bigger chunks versus the um, shreds it, I just think it works better and stays in place but you can totally use shreds use what you have I'm gonna sprinkle my onions down so that they sit on the top of my beans A good layer of onions like I said we love our onions and then I'm going to put my beans down. You can make these burritos any size you like. That's why I like making them at home with homemade beans. They are so much better than purchasing a already made freezer burrito. Oops, guess I got a little much on that. These, I'm using really big shells, so this is going to make a really big burrito. Um, when I was working outside the home <laughs> in a medical office, I would literally cut this in half. I would take the whole thing, cut it in half, eat half for breakfast and half for lunch, or if I was hungry in between. <laughs> it provides a couple meals. You can microwave these to heat them up, however you want to do it. Also, if you want to add rice, you can um, make your rice up, let it cool down, and add your rice right into the burrito. And make bean and rice burritos. You don't want to put cheese in? Skip the cheese. If you don't like onions, skip the onions. You can make these exactly the way you want to make them. 
Okay, I have the two freezer bags full, and these are really, these are extra large burritos because they're extra large shells, and I got nine out of them, and I have enough beans for a tenth one, but I have decided this is what we're eating for lunch. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pop these into the freezer as is, and these won't last long. If you're gonna store these, like I said, for any amount of time, make sure that you wrap them in, um, some wax paper first and then put them in here individually that way it makes it easier if you're going to take them on the go um, we're pretty much home these days uh, my husband takes sandwiches to work he has no way to heat anything up so he doesn't take these to work this is for quick dinners quick lunches quick breakfasts these are good for any meal you can get smaller shells and make them much smaller if you prefer you can also add chicken you could add beef to these if you prefer um, you could make them layered burritos and do rice beans meat you know if you'd like to add onions if you like to add cheese whatever you want to do the only thing i would not put inside of a burrito is sauce just because it'll make it soggy it would bleed through the shell i've done that before so there you go easy freezer burritos okay that's all there is to my fast easy freezer friendly bean burritos if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, and I sure do appreciate your support. If you haven't started following me on Instagram yet, you should. At JennyGoff18, I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.